Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Madam Suzanne. Today, we're going to be talking about how to become the escort's favorite client. So, of course, as you know, the escorts have many clients. Uh, some have more than others. Some are super busy, some not so, so, you know, right there in the middle, some slow. But it doesn't really matter how many how many clients the escort has. They normally have a minimum of maybe three, five, or ten clients that they are their absolute favorite, and they cannot wait to see them. Genuinely, they like them for real. Of course, they love the money, but they really like their personality and they like the way they are and how they treat them and everything else. And this is my advice for all the hobbyists out there that are involved or would like to participate in this hobby, which is seeing an escort. If I was a client, the first thing I would do is when I contact the escort, I'm very, very nice, very respectful, very patient, very understanding. So effective communication, very, very important. And you got to be patient because remember, most escorts do their own screening, their own calls, their own everything, right? And remember, in this business, we get many, many, many obscene phone calls, wankers, people that can't afford it, people that just want to party for free or try to you know, F the escort for free. So just be aware of that, that when you get on the call with an escort, you might be call number 10. You might be call number 100 for that day. You just never know, right? So as always, being courteous, being nice, being respectful will definitely take you a long way, okay? That's number one. Number two, know exactly what date and time you are going to see the escort. And before you even call the escort, make sure you go on their website, okay, and read all the do's and don'ts, FAQ page, all their rules and and whatever they have on their website that associated to make an appointment and adhere by them. So if the escort says, I would rather have you fill out a form first before you call me and just leave me your contact number and I will call you, then do that. Just follow the protocol. There's a reason why escorts have a protocol. It's something that they have to do in order to better manage their time and their schedule and their appointments and their clients and their life. So it's always best to just do your homework first like everything else in life do your research, do your homework, make sure you pick the right escort, of course. Uh, look at the reviews, look what other, uh, read what other clients that have seen her said about, you know, setting up appointments or seeing her or meeting her, or all this stuff. And you get to know that person before you have a wealth of information that you could use in order for you to better understand the person, better understand the best way to go about dealing with them. Now, I have to stop here for a second and let you know that most clients, when they call an escort, it's last second. And it's one of those things that it's an instant gratification need. So we offer a service that is only desirable when the client feel the need for intimacy. So that being said, most clients, I would venture to say over 80, if not over 90% of clients, when they call, that's because they're horny and they want some. Keeping it very, very straightforward, raw and simple. And the problem with that for the escort is that they get tired of telling the clients the same thing over and over again. Like, uh, you know, go look at my website. Have you been to my website? Okay, go look at my website. Look at my reservation form. Look at my reservation page. Look at my FAQ page. Look at my whatever page. And then call me back. Or just just follow the, the protocol. So the problem with that is it's an instant gratification thing. And most clients do not 
like to read anything that the escort had to say. They just want to look at her. Very primitive. Go back to the cave days. Men are very, very primitive and simple at their core. Okay? With all due respect. I'm a guy. I know. They want to look at the picture and feel that they would love to be intimate with that person and be able to call and get there in 30 minutes or less and do the do and go home and go about their business. Well, what you guys don't know is there's a lot behind just that picture or that ad or that phone number or that pretty face or that plump ass or those nice double Ds, okay? It's a business. So the smart client would definitely do their homework first. That's all I'm saying. Take some time. It won't take that long, maybe five or 10 minutes of your time and go ahead and read. Go read a couple of reviews. The, 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 you're as good as your latest review. So read the latest review of the escort if she has any. And um, then read the website if she has instructions on there or whatever she says in the ad and just read and pay attention and follow the protocol. Now, when you get on the phone, after you do all the reservation form, whether she calls you, you call or whatever it is going on, whatever the situation is. Like I said, make sure you're respectful, you're nice, you're courteous, courteous, you're cordial <clears throat> and, and just listen and be aware that this is a person that deals with a lot of people on a daily basis. So you just got to be patient, okay? And you got to remember, a lot of them are very young, in the early 20s, okay? Uh, probably the majority is from, say, 22 to 35. So you got that demographic from 22 to 28. You just got to be real patient, okay? They're young. Uh, they're still learning. They have a big learning curve ahead of them no matter what they do in life. So just be patient. And you remember when we were that age, right? <clears throat> and then once that phone is all done and, and you set up the appointment and you know exactly what date you want to see them and what time and for how long and, and make sure you give them what they need for screening purposes. So in other words, once you do your homework, you know that they're legit that it's not a sting, reverse sting operation. The cops are pretending to be girls and trying to grab the Johns or the clients. Then you give them what they need, okay? I always loved when I did a lot of screening over my days. And I loved the client that was professional and they knew this was a business and dealt with it as such over the phone, over email, over text, and gave me what I needed because they knew that in order for me to book the appointment, they have to give me what I need. They have to give me the name, the age, the description, the occupation, anything I need I need to make, make myself feel safe that he is a safe client for my escort. And those were ended up being the best, best escort clients, period. Uh, just because um, of the way they handled themselves and they gave us everything, they were, they were really nice behind closed doors as well. So that's from my experience. So be that guy, okay? Be the guy that gives them what they need, okay? Make the life simpler and easier. And then they're gonna love you for it, trust me, okay? The easier you make it for them, okay, please be discreet. Of course, I'm gonna be discreet. Or here's my uh, here's my work website. You'll see me, I'm the CEO. Here's my picture, it's what I look like. Okay, don't puke or whatever, make a joke, you know, if you're, if you're that type of person. And uh, just give them what they need. And it's going to be very simple. Bam, bam, bam. Once you do your homework and know they're legit, you know that they have as much to lose as you are, if not more. Because, you know, they don't want to get in trouble and they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to have a bad review, especially if they're reviewed, uh, highly reviewed and everything like this. So it's very important for them to be legit as well as you are. So give them what they need. Now, make sure whatever the date and time of the appointment is, make sure you make it on time. Common sense, right? And if you're gonna be late, if something changes, please let them know right away. There's nothing worse. Just like you know, you're in business, you know yourself. There's nothing worse like somebody making an appointment 
and not keeping it, not calling to, to let you know what's going on. That, and here you are sitting there waiting and planning and letting other people know, no, I, I don't have seven o'clock, you know, it's already booked. Uh, can you see me? I mean, you know, that one appointment might cost them three other ones. Uh, had you called and just told them, hey, listen, you know, I, I can't make it. Something came up. You know, I listen, stuff happens. It's life. Uh, just make sure you're a, a good communicator and communicate as soon as you find out. Now, of course, some escorts are hard ass and hard noses, and they'll tell you, look, man, if you if you cancel on me, uh, I'm just not going to see you again. Well, that's just something that you have to deal with, right? If that's that's how they are. Now, in my case, I always gave the client one or two chances, but no more than three. Because then that tells me that, you know, they're just messing around. I knew some, some of my clients were really, really busy and they had legitimate. I remember this particular client. Uh, he was in real estate, very, very successful real estate person. And this guy, out of every five appointments, he, he postponed or canceled three of them. But I continued booking him because I knew it was legit. I knew the guy is legit. I knew that he was a really busy guy. He gets called in all the time for whatever. So uh, who am I to judge his management style or, or whether he's an effective manager or not or what's going on in his business. But nevertheless, I always gave him another chance because he was a good client and he was a good communicator. He let me know. And I was always able to book somebody else in his place because I had so many clients. So it didn't really hurt me any. Now, of course, if I was an independent escort, that could be detrimental to my income for that day, right? If I only see two or three gentlemen or escorts, uh, escort clients in one day, so that one two hour appointment that you did not, you failed to tell me that you're not coming, you know, it's going to cost me an, an extra, you know, 800 or 1000 or 2000, whatever the, the rate may be for that particular escort and that she could have booked somebody else. So you cost in her, her opportunity. So it's opportunity cost lost here. So we just have to be aware of that. Okay. Just like any other business, you just got to be cordial and let them know if you can't make it. And when you do make it, make sure you're on time and then follow all the procedures, especially if you're first time client, follow the protocol on the two step or three step or whatever step to give you the address. They're going to tell you, go to this intersection and then go to, remember, it's about safety. It's about discretion in this country. It's illegal. So you understand this is what they're doing because they want to make sure that, you know, law enforcement trying to set them up and law enforcement like to do it last minute. And they just want to get that address right away so they can set up the perimeter and set up everybody and the whole sting and everything else. And, and escorts are aware of that. So, and this is one of the reasons why when I, uh, first had a first time client, I did a three step, sometimes a four step address before I got them to the escort, because I wanted to make sure that there was no hanky panky going on. There was no uh, setup going on. Okay. So it's all about safety. And I'm sure you understand that, right? Once you get there, please make sure that you're nice when you first meet them. If they hug, they hug. If they don't, don't push it. If they kiss, they give you a kiss on the cheek, whatever, don't push it. Just go with their flow, okay? Just the best advice I can give you. Go with their flow. Whatever their flow is, have a smile on your face. Be be genuine. Be nice. Hopefully, you're that type of person. And just be nice and be genuine, okay? And that's going to, you know, go a long way in, in the long run, okay? It's going to do give you a better session in the long run. And that's, that's your objective is to get the best session that you can. The most bang for your money, pun intended. Okay. And make sure you have the donation ready. I've always thought it was very, very classy to put, and you don't have to do this. And every escort is different. Some escorts require, some girls don't. But uh, for the majority, uh, I always like to have something in an envelope or a card or something like this. And it just shows clash and shows, you know, sincerity and everything else like that. And believe me, it'll give you a better session. Trust me. Okay. It's better for you in the long run. Uh, I thought it was always thought that, you know, Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you for seeing me. Whatever. A couple of words doesn't take you cost you a dollar, two dollars for the card, whatever it is. Just a note, man. Hey, listen, thank you for seeing me and have the, the donation tucked in there. Now, if money is no object, and you're the type of person that is generous, naturally. Let's say the escort is $500 an hour. 
and you had booked for an hour. It's such a classy move to give a tip up front, if you're going to give a tip. And I'll tell you why. Because you are letting the escort know that you appreciate her ahead of time. And she's knowing this before she gives you her service. So wouldn't you want the escort to know that before the session starts, that, then after? Because what that tells the escort, now you put it on her. Look, I'm taking care of you, right? Now I expect you to take care of me even more than the regular client because I'm giving you 100 to 200 on top of your donation, right? This is unsaid. This is not talk about it. You don't whatever. But when she sees that and she counts it, she's like, oh my God. And some escorts might tell you, oh, you gave me X. I'm like, no, no, that's for you. I just want to let you know that I appreciate you taking, taking the time to see me. I know you're busy and I really appreciate you doing that for me. That's going to go a long way with your wife, let alone the escort. Okay. Trust me on that one. All right. So that said, now, if she requires you to go take a shower, go take a shower, go with the flow, whatever you got to do, right? Just go along with the flow. You're in her domain now. You're on her turf. Okay. Just do it. You'll thank me later. And then, when it comes to the intimacy thing, make sure you've done your homework, the do's and don'ts on what she offers, what she doesn't offer. And don't push the envelope, especially not, the, not on the first encounter, okay? Uh, just go with the flow, have a good time, enjoy yourself within the parameters and guidelines and boundaries of that particular escort you see. Okay? If you want extra services and she offers it, then you know discuss that beforehand, okay? Uh, and if you just want to wait for the second session, you can discuss that beforehand before you go and actually make the appointment and confirm it. It's just common sense. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I apologize with all due respect. Uh, I, if I if I come across very, very uh, simple or very basic, but it's just basic communications, right? And doing the right thing and just being a nice guy. And hopefully you pick the right escort that appreciates that and reciprocate that back to you with the best service or the service that you're looking for. Okay, so it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. It's a give and take, right? You give a donation and they give you the great service. It's just a very simple contract, an unwritten contract, right? No uh, signatures and blood here required. And then of course, once you're done with the session, always be nice and respectful. And thank you so much. I really appreciate you and all this stuff. Just being nice communications and whatever questions you have. If you have questions about extra services for next time or what's the best time to see you or whatever, that's when you ask them the questions and uh, make sure you leave on time. Don't overstay. Don't overdo your stay. Don't over, you know, overstay your welcome. Uh, if it's an hour, try to just do the hour and leave and don't huff and puff if, if it's just an hour and she expects you to leave in an hour, it is an hour. Listen, you know, you know, we pay for an hour, we got an hour. Just like if you go and get a massage, you pay for an hour massage, you get an hour massage, right? Uh, you pay an hour training session at the gym, you get an hour. Okay, most people are not going to give you more than an hour. Some people are a little bit lenient. They'll give you an extra five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever, but I would not push it, especially not on the first time. I, I don't, I'm not that kind of person. I would not push it ever, but especially I'm not, not on the first date, okay? And um, after that, um, second session, you'll be able to get more if that's what you want. Uh, just make sure you communicate beforehand and just be not nice and respectful and cordial. And believe me, the escort will appreciate you more than you'll ever know. And it will show in her service because she start giving you a lot more and she'll give anybody else. She won't give you the bare minimum that she's gonna get away with with everybody else uh, as far as the service. It's also a good idea to bring a gift on the second uh, rendezvous, right? Um, because if you, get, if you bring it on the first, the tip is fine because there's no emotional connection and then otherwise it'll be weird like to bring, you know, chocolates or flowers or roses or whatever, that's kind of weird. But if you want to wait till the second or even third session and then bring a gift, that will uh, that will 
pay tons in dividends, okay, for service. So that's basically what I would do to become the escort's favorite client. I'm just going to be nice and cordial and, and they would not, can't wait until they see you again. Cause then they know you're nice. They know you're generous. They know you're cordial. They know you're, you're sweet and they know that you respect them and go by the rules. Very simple. Okay. Always be safe. Always be healthy and always be happy. Okay. And if you have any questions, please send me an email to madamsuzanne2020 at gmail.com. It'll be on the description of this video. And if you have not uh, subscribed, please do so. Like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy yourself. Happy holidays, by the way. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.